please get the marimbas. These are new to this year. And, um, thank you. Charter Public School. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Every time, every time. They never disappoint. Um, and we will have a blessing from Pastor Janine Daly from New Bethel, but we're going to put that on pause because we have, again, a PowerPoint. So we're going to wait on it. Um, we're calling all the folks that we need to to get things up and running, so just wait with us. We're just going to thug it out for a little bit. Um, this is, you know, this is what it is like. It's like to put on events. It happens, so just bear with us as we get things set up. How do y'all feel about our group photo? Yes. While we wait. You all are looking quite lovely in this audience, so get your get your faces ready. We're gonna take your picture. 
to come together on this day, united as one as we honor and celebrate those who have made and continue to make a difference in this world. We thank you for the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as we honor him for his courage to stand for social justice and equality for all. We thank you for Laura Smith and her family for their pioneering work and spirit that birthed the Laura Smith Fund to preserve a place for the continued celebration and recognition of Dr. King. We honor all of the living, the dream, those individuals who've received the award in the past. We just thank you, oh God, and bless everyone here today. Ignite us with the fire, the passion, and the courage to live by the principle of why we can't wait. Yes. The time is always, always right to do right. God, release your blessing upon us. Endow us with your spirit to be agents of change, social justice seekers. Empower us with your strength and wisdom yes. to continue to do the work in this world that Dr. <coughs> Dream King dreamed of. Mm. We thank you for our gathering today. Saturate us with love and unity. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can everybody say amen? amen. amen. Much Pastor Janine Daly. Bethel, the new Bethel AME is located here in Lowell. If y'all are looking for a new church home, it's on Grand Street. So you know. I'm going to welcome and ask Stacy to come up here and, and uh, lead us and lift every voice and sing. So get your singing, uh, get your voices ready. We're gonna do a little singing together. So excited to be here today. This is a really important song. I'm going to sing the first verse, and then I would love for you to join with me. You could stand for the second verse, stand for the first verse, if you're able. Um, really important because this song is powerful and has such meaning to people that look like me. Okay? So. <clears throat> Lift every voice and sing to
second verse. <laughs> Sunny the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yeah, with a steady beat, have near our weary feet, come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We have come over our way with the tears has been washed. path through the blood of the slaughter out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last with a white gleam of our bright star is cast last verse God of our to come up and welcome the beautiful crowd. someone said, use the mic. It will be so much better for everyone. So, good afternoon, everyone. Amen. Oh, I know. It's Martin Luther King Day. You can do better than that. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. It is, what, it is cold outside, but it is very warm in here. So, we are really, really blessed to spend some time today as community. Um, I had a great start to my day because I had the opportunity to be part of Bedford Embraces Diversity this morning on our Bedford campus. You see, we simply are the hosts for our Martin Luther King Day events, both in Bedford and in Lowell. So as your host today, let me welcome you to the beautiful Donahue Academic Arts Center. Many of you in Lowell know that this has had a long, distinguished, sometimes seedy history uh, here in the city of Lowell. But what you will see now is an academic arts center that is a living classroom every day for all of our students in the performing arts, in theater, in music, 
and dance, including the room that you are sitting in, where classes are held for theater, acting classes, etc. Dance recital hall upstairs, concert hall. If you have not been in this magnificent building, please make sure, we're happy to take you around, give you a tour. It's a beautiful facility. We call it the Shoebox Theater because the same folks that the architects that created this theater created the Hastings Puddies Theater at Harvard. Yeah. And so, for those of you who don't know that, they squeezed everything we possibly could into a very small footprint. But this is our home, our house, and we are really delighted to welcome you here today. Today is really special to all of us for many, many different reasons. And I think if we went around the room and took the time to do that, we could all talk about what Martin Luther King Day means to all of us. But more importantly, I want to recognize what changed in the city of Lowell many years ago is the fact that Yes, Ronald Reagan announced, after some trepidation, shall we say, that this would be a national holiday. And then, in the city of Lowell, it was a holiday, but it wasn't a celebratory holiday until Laura Smith stepped up to make it so. So, I had the great pleasure of working with Laura. She was one of the first people that welcomed me to Middlesex when I came in 2010. And at that point, I would say that Laura Smith was an institution not only within Middlesex Community College, but within the city of Lowell. She and her husband and their family are tremendous stewards, not only of Martin Luther King's dream, but also the commitment to students of color getting the education that they deserve in this city. So thank you, Laura and Robert, for everything that you continue to do as citizens within the city of Lowell and as leaders here, as servant leaders. We are very, very grateful for everything that you do for us and for the community. So yes, I was alive when Martin Luther King was alive. And yes, I remember as a nine-year-old by writing my first paper about my hero, right? I think of Martin Luther King as my hero. When people ask all the time about heroes, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King is one of the first names that comes to mind for me, and always has been. I grew up in a black, uh, predominantly black neighborhood in Newport, Rhode Island, and in many ways, I was raised by black families. Uh, and I know what that community means to anyone who wants to raise their voice. It is hard to believe, it's actually almost impossible to believe, especially with what's happening in our country today, that 60 years ago this August, the I Have a Dream speech happened in Washington, D.C. 60 years. And where have we come? Right? But I think the most important thing is that we get to celebrate today, we get to share an opportunity to build community and build up and lift up community voices. This is an event created by community partners. This is not a Middlesex Community College event. This is the partners that created this event. So this morning, I got to hear Dr. Rep, uh, Willie Brook, Brook, Brock, Brock Broderick, excuse me, who's the pastor of the 12th Baptist Church in Roxbury, talk about what it meant to him to be part of that community and what it means. And I think he talked this morning about three things that I hope we all will remember. That Dr. King would want us to continue to believe the dream. Not everyone in our communities believes the dream of racial equality. And secondly, he wanted us all to take some action to protect the dream. Right, to keep that alive and make sure that people understand that you have to nurture the opportunity for equality in all of our communities. But last and not least, he talked about progressing the dream. And so I would ask that all of us here today not only celebrate Dr. King, but that we also commit to carry with us all of those teachings and the life and the legacy that has brought us here today because through that, we will help together create a better world. Thank you so much for being here.
Thank you very much, Phil. Um, as he said, this event is put on by all of our community partners. So there's a lot of folks that come to the table to make sure that today happens. And I'm grateful to see so many folks in the audience, many from the organizations that have come out to put this event together. So um, there is a scholarship that get, that has gone out, I think, for the past five years. It's gone out for several years. Several years. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is your part. So, so take it over. Thank you. I appreciate the Wasada. So the reason why you're here and why it's so important is because all the funds that are taken up are given to scholars. And it's so important. One of the things that Dr. King believed in so much was the power of education. And so as you're seeing, we did, um, we did actually have a scholarship recipient last year, Alina. And Alina talked about the various ways why this scholarship was helpful for her how it allowed for her to not worry so much about the costs, and we all know there are extensive costs to education, but there's extensive power in education. So, so important, and that's why we wanna thank you. I think it's oftentimes people go to events but don't know the why behind what they're doing, and so we wanted you to understand and see the why, and understand that more, the more people that come to these events, the more people that support in these areas, you're going to see more scholars, you're gonna see more change, you're gonna see more equity. And so we wanted you to understand the why. So that is the why. And I again want to thank you for believing in the power of the why. And as you can see, we're trying to go and unfortunately, let me just tell you, Dr. King knew how to keep things moving and regardless of the, the, the technical glitches, we're still gonna celebrate him because guess what? It's not about the technical stuff, it's about all of us being here, all of us understanding the purpose and the drive that Dr. King had okay. and not letting it be a, just a moment, but a movement. And so that's what this is about. So I'm not gonna keep apologizing for the technical glitches, they are what they are. We're gonna keep celebrating Dr. King and making sure that his dreams are reality, okay? So now that we're done with apologizing for the technical side. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we wanna just basically make sure that we have an awesome opportunity for the Lowell High School Black Unity Step Club to come out and do their thing. But before they come, I also want you to understand that Step came out of something, right? There's a why. The reality um, of it was is drumming became illegal. And drumming for a, a lot of, well, for the slaves, was a way that they would communicate. So what we do is what we do. We're ingenious, right? We make a change. If you're gonna change, we can't do one thing, we're gonna do something different. And so what we did is we decided to use our bodies as the drums because you can't stop what's in our physical body from happening, right? So with that, please enjoy the Black Unity Step Club team.
Y'all better give it up. That was amazing. I felt so proud. I was part of the step team, but I never really performed with the big groups because I wasn't that good. But um, I was part of the group. I was part of the team, though. Uh, so I'm very, very impressed. Yeah. Let's, let's applaud them as they make way to their seats. Uh, and um, it was last year I got the pleasure of hearing from a group of young people at Lowell High School that are part of the, I don't want to get the name wrong, the Students Making Change. Um, and they're a really incredible group of young people who are doing magnificent work um, in and outside of high school. Um, so I would like to invite up Maureen Onyenehu, who's going to address us. Hopefully I said that a little bit right, I'll be trying. Um, so again, we will applaud as Ma Maureen makes her way to us. our society and fostered an environment in which people are not accepted. Injustices are rooted in bigotry and ignorance and are able to roam free throughout the world because of people who are not willing to renounce ignorance and accept change. We have been asked to answer the question, why can't we wait? And I will respond by saying, waiting is no longer an option. As a youth who has been a victim of oppressive acts and has seen multiple situations in which someone has abused their power, I know firsthand the only way to improve the world I live in today is to take action immediately. I no longer want to live in a world in which a mother fears for her black children's safety whenever they leave their homes. I no longer want to live in a world where an LGBTQ plus child is ostracized in social settings because of their sexuality. I no longer want to live in a world where domestic violence shelters are full with so many people that have been abused that they don't have enough space to accept more people. I no longer want to live in a world in which poverty and homelessness have become an epidemic. I am the change in the world through my own youth activism because I am ready to advocate for myself and my peers. Mm -hmm. We can no longer sit on the sidelines waiting for someone who we believe is wiser, older, or more educated to make change in our community. We must take action in order to bring more awareness to these issues that are a threat to our human rights so we can inspire future generations. Change doesn't come from simply agreeing with an idea. It comes from sowing these ideas of hope into the minds that can help make this idea a reality. Today we are gathered here to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who began his career in activism in 1955 when he was only 26 years old. Dr. King is known for many of his written works, but his most renowned work is his I Have a Dream speech. In this speech, he conveys the message that hopefully in the future, every person who lives in America will finally be considered as equals and have the same freedoms and opportunities despite the color of their skin. This speech was a call for action and has invoked a spirit of change. Dr. King left a lasting effect on the world that is still trying to be replicated today. As a youth activist, Dr. King is not only an inspiration, but a symbol of a better future. All men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects us all indirectly. This is a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that describes how we are all connected as people. The actions that we choose to make do not only affect our lives, but the lives of everyone around us. We are all tied in a single garment of destiny because we are all created to leave our imprint on the world. I want to live in a world where LGBTQ plus rights are no longer up for debate. I want to live in a world where having a darker skin complexion isn't seen as a threat or as a sign of violence. I want to live in a world where people are not discriminated against because of their gender identity. Most importantly, I want to live in a world in which acceptance and compassion is the standard. Why we cannot wait. Activism cannot wait because corruption doesn't stop. We must keep Dr. King's movement of enlightenment going unless we want its fuse to burn out. We must be the light amongst our peers, in our community, and around the world. 
It's the only way we can work together to create the world we want to live in. All of us, all of us in this world are connected as people and must work together to be able to achieve Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, a dream in which all people are united as one and are able to express themselves without a fear of repercussion. <laughs> speak after that, to be quite honest with you. But I will say, I was back there trying not to get emotional because it's an awesome thing when you see our young people speak the truth, speak with power, speak with authority, speak with conviction. Oh, Maureen, you just made me a happy woman. You made me a happy woman because it's awesome to know that we're, the work that we're doing and they're seeing efforts but they're also willing to take it to the next level, and that's awesome. So thank you again, Maureen, and Students Making Change. Ooh, that's awesome. Yes, right, you can give them a hand. The next person we're gonna have come and speak today is Anye Nkembe. And I have to say, I'm really excited about hearing what he's gonna bring today. Anya, just for those of you who don't know anything about him, um, and you should know about him if you're from Lowell, because he has been a change maker and has been activist um, while he was here. He is a, a graduate of Lowell High School, a graduate of Suffolk, um, Suffolk University Sawyer Business School. Anya, the floor is yours, and thank you for being willing to bring, bring some stuff to us today, and I know you are, thank you so much. Thank you guys all. Um, first off, um, thank you one more time, Maureen, because that speech was powerful. I mean, I gotta go after that. Let's see what I can do. Let's see what I can do after that. Um, but happy Martin Luther King's Day. Um, I'm happy that all of you guys are here today. Um, I always want to start off by giving thanks to God, because without God, we wouldn't be here today. Amen. <clears throat> so, you can't always wait for the perfect time. Sometimes, you have to dare to do it because life's too short to wonder what could have been. Those are quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Good afternoon to everyone in attendance today, celebrating the great late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is an honor to get the chance to stand in front of you all today and deliver this speech. First and foremost, I want to give um, a big shout out and thank you to Masada um, for yeah. reaching out to me. I also want to um, give a big thank you to both of my parents. Um, obviously, without them raising me for the man I am today. Um, so I always want to give love and thanks to them. Yeah. And then I also want to give a thank you to just the community of Lowell, because this is my community, and I always wear it on my back wherever I go. Um, Mill City, 978, Lowell, wherever yeah. I go. <laughs> And then, like, lastly, I said I want to give thanks to God because without him, I wouldn't have been able to wake up today. So, God, give thanks to God. So, I have a question for all of you. Um, how many of you ever heard someone tell you they're waiting for the right time to do something? Yeah. Or not only that, you know, how many of us have been like, you know what, I'm going to wait for the right time to do something. You know, maybe I can do it tomorrow or next week, but, you know, I don't need to do it right now because it's not the right time. Well, I know I have, in case no one else, I know I've done that. And I wanted to take this moment to tell you guys a story about a kid that I knew um, growing up. And a kid that I knew that was growing up that never really waited for the right time. He always knew right now would be the right time. So this is a young boy that he grew up, he grew up very sick from the moment he was born. He grew up very sick. He was dealing with kidney issues. And the doctors used to always tell him that, you know, you wouldn't live long because of his kidney issues. And he told his parents that he wouldn't live long because of his kidney issues. And because of his kidney issues, that he wouldn't be able to go to travel to see where his parents grew up um, in Africa. Because if he was to travel there, obviously, as we know, the health system isn't the same in Africa how it is in America. And if he was to go there, 
that he wasn't going to be able to live long. But he didn't wait for them to decide whether he should go or not. He did go, and he was there for two years, and then he came back. So that's one, that's one instance of him not waiting. Not only that, there's this child that we're talking about. When he was in high school, he wanted to run for class president. But a lot of people used to tell him, you know, I don't think you should run, you know, it might not be the right time. But what they didn't understand, well, you can only run for class president as a senior. He was a senior, so if it wasn't now, when else would you run? He had no other choice, it was now or never. You know, and he took the opportunity to run for class president. And even when he ran for class president, he knew that it was the right time and it was time for change. And he ran and he won class president. Yeah. And even once he won class president, and there was a lot of controversy, he could have taken the time to, you know, you know, fall back and take it for himself. But he understood that it was the right time to start change. Um, even when no one else wanted to start the change, he, to start, he decided to start a um, racial competency program at Law High School and to bring change to Law High for the future generation of students to be able to be president whether it was going to be another black student, a girl, Asian, LGBT, but to open the doors for future students not to be afraid to chase their dreams and be who they want to be. And when also, after graduating high school, as he was preparing for college, the doctors once again came and said it might not be a great time for him to go to college because of his health. And they believed going to college for four years with his health issues as a, with the kidney transplant would have affected him. But like always, this student knew it was the right time and he didn't want to wait. So he did go to college and he graduated in four years oh. with a bachelor's. Oh. Now, you want to know the thing I love the most about this boy is that through all the obstacles and setbacks, he's always been, through all the obstacles and setbacks he's had throughout his life, he still was able to be here today at the right time to get this opportunity to speak in front of you all. I acted, wrote, directed, and produced my first movie. Yeah. <laughs> Today is the day we celebrate an icon and a legend. We celebrate the great Dr. King, a man who never waited for the right time, a man who never waited to be told to dream. Because of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream, today we are able to sit in a room together. Because of his dream, I was able to start my own business, which is called Dream Big Productions, which focuses on people to dream so big and express their creativity in many different ways. So if there's one message I hope you can take from today, it's start waiting for the right time. That time is now. Don't allow your dreams to go to the grave with you. Write those dreams down, chase them, and finally accomplish them. You never know whose life you can change by chasing your dreams. Thank you. Masada and I, when he said, don't let your dreams die with you, that hit me. That hit me hard. So thank you for that, because it's important to hear young people 
feed into us older, I won't say I'm older, yeah. but well, us older folks, because it's important for us to, to learn from you, because we do learn from you. So thank you for bringing that. And I can't wait to see what the next act of your play, film, whatever it is, I'm there for it. So thank you, Anya. Please give him another hand. And now, we're going to give out an award. So I'm excited about this part. I'm excited about this part for a number of reasons. I think that one thing that we don't necessarily do enough of is celebrate one another, right? We're so busy doing work. And sometimes it's great work, but being busy being busy doesn't allow for us to stop, take stock, and really thank the people who are sewing into our communities to make them better, stronger, and brighter. And so I'm really glad for this opportunity to be able to do this today. So we have, I think it's five, <laughs> Living the Dream nominees. And our first one, Alan O'Karras. You'll see all the different things that um, he was nominated for before. He is um, an employee at the Coalition for a Better Acre. And one of the things it says, Adelino does not sleep. So I saw that a lot, multiple times. So for those of you who know him, you probably agree with that. Um, he volunteers his time seven days a week. You know, I work a lot, but seven days a week is a lot. All right, that's all the days we have. So it's fantastic that somebody cares enough about the community to say, you know what, I may be tired, but tired and alive means I'm ready to do some work, okay, to do some good work. So he's our first nominee. Our next nominee, and wait a minute, Adelino, is he here? Can you stand up where you are? Okay, so there he is. So everybody can, there he is. Okay, our next, um, our next nominee, Jean Murley, is Jim Murley here? I'm not sure if she's here or not, but Jean Murley Gonzalez is my colleague. <laughs> so she works with me at Lowell Community Health Center. She's the director of the Reach Lowell program. Jean Marie's job and what she does is so phenomenal because she makes sure that the people in the community that need extra health support get that. So our, our, our people that are suffering with things, especially like high blood pressure and diabetes, that as we know in our community is a thing, it's a very real thing, she makes sure that all the supports that people can get by running programs and doing all that is achieved. So thank you, Jean Marie. <laughs> Our next nominee is Banal Howard. She's in the back if you don't know who she is. <laughs> and Sue is pointing her out um, dramatically. Um, I mean, I really don't need to say what Banal does because if you don't see her every day of every week, everywhere in the city of Lowell, then you're probably not outside of your house. <laughs> so she does a lot for our community and I thank you for that, Banal. Banal, can you please stand just so ever? People call her Vanna, Banal. All right, and our next nominee is one of the my co Well, dang, I couldn't even say her name. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of like Masada too. She's all right, you know, I'll keep her. Um, Masada is amazing. She um, is the Center for Hope and Healing's um, Senior Manager of Prevention and Education, and she takes that seriously. She does not play around when it comes to caring for the community. And she's also, for those of you who don't know, an amazing spoken word artist. Yeah. So if you haven't had the opportunity to hear her, then you've missed out, truthfully. And I'm sorry for you. But you should definitely, the next time she does have um, something where you hear, are able to hear her, the way she takes words and manipulates them to really evoke feeling is so, such a powerful gift. So thank you, Masada. Thank you, Masada. And then we have Miss Mona Tyree. Excuse me, Miss Mona, can you stand so I can listen to you all? So I won't say what Mona did, but she might have worked on somebody's campaign. So, uh, <laughs> but in addition to that, Mona um, dedicates her time to, I mean, if you literally, Mona has been one of those people that's like, oh, this is happening, this is happening. If you, if you need to know and be in the know, she knows everything that's happening all of the time. Um, I've known her for a long, long time. I won't say how long, because then it kind of says how old I am. <laughs> but um, again, really honored to be able to see her name in these nominations, because again, sometimes we don't nominate the people who are just tirelessly working in the community, because oftentimes they do things behind 
behind the scenes. So this is your time. I'm so excited for you to get this nomination. All right, so we're going any further. Hold it right there. Don't press another button. Okay, so we're gonna have someone come up to help me and give out this award, and that's Miss Shamir. She's coming down right now. Oh, Shamir and Shamar? No, no, okay. No. She's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Just Shamir is coming up to help give out this award, and here she comes right now. Okay, so I had asked if I was supposed to say something, and they said, sure. <laughs> so, hi, my name is Shamir Rivera Quintel, and I am the Director of Operations at Coalition for a Better Acre. And I'm so excited to be here. This is an amazing event that I've been coming to for as long as I can remember. Um, so, the person that we nominated, um, I think they're going to put him up on the screen. Can I say his name? <laughs> <laughs> with CBA for a year and a half, and we are so proud and grateful to have him as an employee and also as a volunteer, an advocate, and really a caring community member. Thank you so much for choosing Adelino for this amazing honor. He is so deserving, even though he says that, you know, he's just doing his job. That's what he tells us. Um, along with all the others that were nominated, he's very deserving, so thank you and congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to make sure that also you take a picture in the middle of the... Congratulations, Adelino. often to, and I look forward to uh, their newsletters that come out and the pamphlets when it's voting season. Um, shout out to Lowell Votes. For, if, you have, if you're not familiar with Lowell Votes, they will get you secured with your voting. They will tell you who the candidates are. They will ask the hard questions. So it is my pleasure to welcome up Yasmin, who is going to encourage us on today. Thank you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm grateful to be here with you all today as we honor and celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. My name is Yasmin and I'm with Lowell Votes, a nonpartisan multilingual coalition working to lower barriers to civic participation and voting for all residents of Lowell, particularly those who have been historically underrepresented. There are many ways you can make a difference in your community, but I'm here to talk about one way in particular, voting. I've talked to a lot of people who think that their vote doesn't matter. They've seen election days come and go while the circumstances of their everyday lives remain the same. Why should I vote? My vote doesn't matter. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge here that voter suppression is very real and still going on today. The United States has a long history of excluding black, brown, and low-income people from voting of making it nearly impossible for entire communities to cast a ballot, of rejecting those ballots once they were cast, of intentionally permeating the idea that some votes count while others do not. And the outcome of such practices, the deep generational distrust of government and voting by communities of color and low-income communities. Mm -hmm. We cannot begin the work of rebuilding trust in our government without first acknowledging the harm that was perpetuated to cause the distrust. Mm -hmm. In Lowell, you can see the outcome of this harm clearly in our voter turnout. In the 2021 municipal election, less than 18% of registered voters cast their ballot. In several races, less than 100 votes separated the elected from their opponent. 
Let me say that again. In a city of over 100,000 residents, less than 100 people determine the outcome of several races. So why does this matter? What does it mean when large populations of voters don't show up to the polls? A cycle is created. Communities of color and low-income communities don't show up to vote because they don't believe their vote counts, resulting in low voter turnout. Low voter turnout invariably favors incumbents who then have little motivation to serve these populations as they believe these communities will not come out to reelect them come election day. As a result, the interests of these communities go underrepresented and unheard, creating further distrust and making it unlikely that they will vote in the following election. And the cycle continues. In municipal elections, the stakes are even higher, as local government is where decisions are made that most impact the everyday lives of residents. Decisions about schools, public safety, housing and zoning, small businesses and transportation are made right in your backyard by public officials in your own neighborhood. Without your input and participation, those in power will continue to make decisions on your behalf. Decisions that not only affect your life, but the lives of those around you. This year is a municipal election in Lowell. Voters will again elect a city council and school committee to represent them. Everyone in this room has the power to stand up and do our part to make sure everyone has the opportunity to make their voice heard and their vote count this election cycle. In order for change to happen, we must act. So make sure your family and friends have a plan to vote. Tune in to your city council and school committee meetings. Sign up to speak at city hall about issues that are important to you. Join your neighborhood group. Do your research on your local candidates and volunteer a few hours to make phone calls or door knock for a candidate you believe in. Sign up to register voters. Be a poll worker for the city. And most importantly, go out and vote. And when you do vote, remember, you are not just voting for yourself. When you vote, you are also voting for those who cannot. For the minimum wage worker who couldn't get time off to vote because election day is still not a national holiday. For the person who missed the deadline to register to vote because in Massachusetts we still do not have same day voter registration. For people who have had the right to vote suspended while incarcerated. For undocumented community members who don't get a say in who represents them at City Hall. For people who still do not believe their vote counts. The question you should ask yourself is not why should I vote? but what does my community stand to lose if I do not? Mm. I'm encouraged. I am encouraged. Thank you, Yasmin. Um, and again, like I said, every year that there's an election year, Lowell Votes puts out a pamphlet. They ask the candidates questions. What are they, what are they, if they're for schools, if they're for education, all these different housing, all of that. And I look forward to that pamphlet every, every year, every election year. So again, look out for that because it will ask the candidates the hard questions. I, I'm very grateful and I am encouraged. Thank you so much, Yasmin. I'm going to ask our pastor, Janine Daly, to come up for a closing prayer as we get ready to exit. We're, we're, near, we're near the end, y'all. Thank you for rocking with us. We can clap. I mean, we can clap. <laughs> this has been an amazing program. Has it not? Yes. 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 All right. So let us all just come together in mind and heart and spirit. God, creator of the universe. We thank you for our time together today. We thank you for remembering the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. We thank you that you've reminded us of who we are and what we're charged to do. We celebrate those who have been acknowledged for their work and for making a difference in the world. Help us, oh God, as we leave to be mindful that we must not wait, that we are agents of change, that we can make a difference, 
Help us to have courage. Help us not to turn our backs. Help us to move forward and do good to make a difference in this world, to show love, peace, justice, joy. Help us, oh God, so we are not stuck in the normal life cycle, but we will have the courage to step out and be different. We thank you for our time today and for all of those who helped make this program possible. It is in Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray. Amen. Before we do close out, just a couple of things that I want us to consider. First and foremost, um, please eat if you didn't. It's on the second floor. Um, the, also, there is going to be an opportunity that you can participate in a vision board about why we can't wait. I think sometimes it's important to put pen to paper. We talk a lot, right? But are we going to action certain things? And so sometimes writing them out is a measure of accountability about what we plan and pledge to do. I know that a lot of people are going to be doing days of service, but I ask you to commit to more than a day. I ask you to commit to a lifestyle, of a commitment of this work, because a day is not going to do it. It's wonderful. I agree with those days, but a day is not going to get it done. We have to commit to a lifestyle. This has to be a lifestyle that we've adopted. And then, last but not least, um, I want to thank our event sponsors, Center for Hope and Healing. I believe we have our executive director here, Lisa, um, Enterprise Bank. I saw many members of Enterprise Bank here today. Lowell Community Health Center. I see Sue Bean is here. I see her. Middlesex Community College, UMass Lowell. And then we have our Living the Dreams partners scrolling up. So thank you to all of you who participated and believe in the dream of Dr. King. And I know that we'd never end these without a song, but it was supposed to play, right? So I'm gonna sing it anyways, because we shall indeed overcome someday, okay? So if you want to, I know this COVID, if you wanna hold hands, fantastic. If you're feeling a little weird because of COVID, that's okay. But I think that we should sing this together, okay? And as we can, you can make your way out. You can talk to your brother and sister. That's fantastic, okay? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall. Bye-bye. Please go get the food. <laughs>